Thanks for checking out this movie review video. So this is for the 2020 film The Dark and the Wicked, and it is a Shudder exclusive that's coming to Shudder on Thursday, February 25th. So since it's not on Shudder yet when I'm putting this review up, this is a no-spoiler review. Also, it's just a new film. Uh, so disclaimer on this one. Um, it, people who know me, people who watch enough, enough of my reviews know that there are certain subgenres of horror that I don't particularly like. This film ends up falling into that subgenre, one, well, one of those subgenres. So you can take from it what you will. I still think I have some valid gripes with this film, but I also think that there are a lot of people out there that will en who will enjoy it more than I did. I didn't really care for this film at all, and I'll break down things I thought were actually really good about it, and some things I thought were really not so good about it. So, mixed bag. Uh, overall, didn't really like it because it's not my subgenre, but... I do have some valid points to make, so hopefully it helps you make decisions. But I also always say that every film is worth watching once, if for nothing other than to make up your own mind. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Do you feel indifferent about it? So go ahead and check it out. Anyway, once again, The Dark and the Wicked. Uh, this film was written and directed by Brian Bertino. You may know some of the stuff he's done before. He did the original The Strangers, which actually I'm not a fan of. I didn't really like that the first time I watched it. Maybe I should rewatch it. But I did see the original film that it was based off of that's a remake of called Them, and that's a French horror film that is actually on Shutter right now, so you should watch Them for sure. Uh, he also did Mockingbird, which I haven't seen. The Monster, which I haven't seen, but I am going to see, and I've heard is good. That's an A24 film. Uh, and also he wrote... Strain the Strangers Pray at Night, which oddly enough, I didn't like The Strangers, but I liked The Strangers Pray at Night. So, kind of a weird thing. And that's part of the reason I say maybe I need to go back and rewatch The Strangers because it feels a little weird that I would like the sequel and not the first one, but who knows. Anyway, quick synopsis of this you know, I'm not going to give you a lot of the information on it. So, basically, it's a brother and sister who go back to their farmhouse where their parents, their elderly parents, are still living, and their elderly father is not doing well health-wise. Uh, but things are going on on the property, basically. Things might not be what they seem. So that's as much as I'm going to say. If it sounds interesting to you, check it out. Make up your own mind. But I'm going to tell you my thoughts on the film. I do like how they begin the film. Uh, it was just showing kind of these these uh, shots of a relatively empty farm, which I had read that uh, this was filmed at Brian Bertino's uh, family's farm, uh, I believe, and it looks nice. It, it really fits the ambiance and everything. It's a good setting, honestly, for the film, but I like how they're just like showing bits of the farm, and it's kind of, you know, low lighting for it, and you're just hearing a lot of like ambient sounds. There's no music, and that's one of the things I really do like with this film is they don't overuse music. In fact, they don't use a ton of music. And when they use it, it's very restrained. And I love that from an audience perspective because otherwise, you know, when it's overbearing, it's beating you over the head, it's telling you how to feel about things. Whereas when it's a little bit lighter or there's no music, you as an audience member can kind of be there and just like take everything in and make up your own mind about how you want to feel about things. And if you want to feel multiple things, uh, if, if things are complicated for you with that film. So I like how it begins. Uh, it is pretty slow, but throughout the film, uh, for a probably about the first half of the film, I would, I would say, it does feel like it's giving you breadcrumbs as you're going, even though it is slow, and that it is building up to something very big. Now, I will say that for me personally, it was a big letdown in the end because I don't feel like how slow it was built things up properly for the ending, and I thought the ending was actually more of like a whimper than like a bang, um, so, but I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. No spoilers, obviously, but yeah, uh, but it is slow, so know that. Now, some people will be totally cool with that because it does have pretty good atmosphere to the film, and I do think that if you feel fully immersed, if you're really, really into this subgenre and you feel fully engaged in the film, uh, it could help kind of keep that tension with how slow it is because they maintain good atmosphere. So it depends on who you are and what you're into. Uh, but even though I, I noticed that, you know, the atmosphere is good, 
I just still felt like the pacing was too slow, definitely too slow. It creates too many lulls, and especially at the end of the film, when I think they really started to need, they really needed to start like picking up the pace and building to something faster, and then it could have even more impact. It seems like they actually slowed down even more in a way, and kind of killed any sort of mood at the end that could have enhanced the ending of the film, which I as I said, I don't even think is a, is a good ending to the film. I think it's very, you know, boring. And overall, I think the film's boring, to be honest. I, I thought it was a boring film. I really, even though I paid full attention to it, I, I couldn't really get into it. It's one of those films where if I just threw it on and I wasn't going to do a review for it, I would probably end up on my phone just messing around and just partially paying attention. So, sorry to say. I do like the look of this film. I will say that. Good directing, good um, cinematography for the most part. Uh, I like the the look as in the colors. It's like they leached a lot of the color out of the film, which really does help with the atmosphere of it being very drab and very sullen. Uh, it's, it's not a happy film, obviously, which a lot of horror films aren't, but some are. But it's uh, it, it does have this very kind of sad... Uh, depressing, um, dread-filled feeling to it, which is good. They did, they did weave that pretty well. There are a bunch of scenes that are way too dark. This is something I like to harp on all the time. Not all the time. There are certain ones where it's, it's too dark, but it's fine because there's not really a whole lot going on. But there are some scenes where it's too dark and you want to see what's going on, but you can't really see what's going on. Plus, there's just kind of too many of those types of scenes. So... It's something I harp on. You know, I know some people aren't necessarily bothered by it, but it bothers me. I want to be able to see what I'm supposed to be watching. It is a film, you know. As the film progresses, you really become aware of the sound design. That is another thing that I did like about this. And this kind of falls into the using a lot of moments of silence, not using too much music or when they're using it. It's very kind of like, you know, under the radar to a degree. Uh, sound design is very good in this film. Uh, and you really do end up paying attention to it because of a lot of the lulls in the film. Uh, so, you know, the things that are going on around the characters on the farm sound really interesting. They sound true to life or what you would assume is true to life. So excellent sound design with this film. I, they really did a good job there. Uh, there's a scene early on I saw coming, but how uh, how far they were actually gonna go with that scene, I, I did not predict. And I like that. That was a, a kind of horrific messed up good moment to the film and if you've seen it when you're watching this you know what I'm talking about where most likely everyone will see it coming because it's something that's been used in horror films before but the degree to that they took it to I have to kind of bravo on that because it took something that I was expecting and was kind of rolled my eyes about because I'm like oh this has been done a lot of times and they put a they just went further. Like, they did their own thing with it. And that's more what I wanted. Like, I wanted more of that type of stuff to the film in general. I wanted them to take this story, to take a lot of the things in the story and and do something different. Make it their own, just like that one scene. And it just felt like it wasn't that. It felt like a lot of stuff I've seen before. And there's not a lot of, of like, a new twist to it or a new feel. Except for the setting. I will say the setting is... Is interesting. Um, like I said before, the atmosphere, sorry, the atmosphere is built pretty well, and they do maintain it to a degree, except for the fact that the film is slow, which I think kind of, you know, loses some attention. Uh, there are some creepy visuals in this that people are are going to like most likely more than me. Um, it's one of those things where like I see what visuals they're creating, and I'm like, I see how people would see this and think it's creepy. I don't necessarily, it doesn't have the effect on me, and maybe that's partially because of my bias of not really liking this subgenre, so I know there are going to be people who love this film, I know there will be, so yeah. There's a change in situation under which bad things in this film happen that is supposed to really like amp up the perception of danger, and I think that was interestingly done, I do like that. You, I would hope you know what I'm talking about if you've already seen it. It kind of changes the um, situation of when things are happening, the bad things, which signals kind of an escalation to a degree. 
Now, when that happened, I thought, okay, here we go. It's going to get crazier. It's going to pick up pace. But it didn't. It actually, in a way, kind of stepped backwards for me. And that, that scene that I was really praising in the beginning that I said, you know, it went further than I thought it was going to go, I felt like that was the pinnacle of the film for me personally. And then everything else just kind of like backpedaled from there. So I just wasn't a fan. The ending is really eh, I wrote down. They could have built it up to a very big moment, but instead they ambled to a whimpering finish, in my opinion. Uh, there's a lot of really good technical stuff. I've already talked about the good things about this film. The acting is another thing. The acting in this is very good. Very good acting. The actors showed up. They did more than their job. They really put everything into these roles. Every one of them. I can't think of anyone in the film who I was like, eh. No, they were all very good. So they did their job. I just think the script isn't there. I really don't think the script is there. Sound design, great. Looks really good. You know, there were some cool camera shots. Some some nice uh, shot composition. You know, it's just, the story's not there. And that's one of the biggest things is that the script is the start of the film. And if the script isn't there, the film isn't going to be able to get there. I just did a review recently on, although it's not to this degree at all, but just something to kind of compare. I recently did a review on um, a uh, Five Dials for an August Moon, which is a 1970 Mario Bava film that's giallo. And it wasn't his script, and he didn't have time to go over the script like he wanted to so he shot the script and the script was bad but it looks visually really good but that's not enough you can't just see things and just rely on that you know you can't have great visuals and just rely on that the story has to be there that's the whole basis of what should be the draw for people and i think that's one of the biggest things missing with this film in my opinion it was just wasn't developed enough. I think maybe another person getting involved in the writing would have been good, or maybe having someone else take a look at it and, and then make some changes after that. I don't know. But I don't know what the process was either. And like I also said, maybe some people out there love it as is, and that's fine. That's that's great. And you can let me know in the comments. Um, yeah, the film is just too long. I really think it should have been cut down quite a bit. That would have helped with kind of like it being very slow and kind of the pacing issues. I understand one of the reasons for it because I think you're kind of supposed to feel the slowness and the anguish and the pain and how dark things are for the characters, but it was just too much. Like, it's just way too slow. Like, you can still achieve that without having it go on so long, and it's just not engaging. It's not interesting for that downtime. Now, it is just like a little bit over an hour and a half, and it feels way longer than that. So that's not good. They probably should have cut it down to about an hour and 15. Just saying. Uh, the final thing I want to say is this really speaks to the stress and emotional hardship a family experiences when a member is seriously sick and how hard it is seeing a family member you no longer recognize because of being sick, because of, you know, things degenerating. And we're all, go, you know, a lot of us have gone through something like that in our lives and with our family and or will go through something like that. Um, so it's very relatable. And uh, I think for that reason, it will connect with a bunch of people. So that's a good aspect of it. But it's also been done in film a lot before. And like I was saying, I didn't feel like there was enough of anything new or any, you know, personal flair put on this that really change, makes the film all that great to me. But I'm also going to say, uh, I don't, I didn't like the films like, just to, this is just to, to exemplify how there are films out there that a lot of people love, and I just don't like it because of its subgenre. The Conjuring, I don't really like that. Insidious, I hated the first Insidious. That was not a good film. So, and I know some people are hearing that right now and are just like, are you out of your mind? I get it, I know. And that's why I'm saying Watch the film yourself, figure it out, and then you can put some comments down here, because I'd love to hear people's uh, differing opinions on this. What did you see in it that you loved? Were some of those things that I said were good in it enough to make it good for you? Or did you see something else? Or did it connect with you personally? Because I could see it doing that. So anyway, out of five stars with half stars in play, for me personally, I'd probably put it down around like a two star or something like that. But 
taking my bias into account, I'm going to put it at a two and a half star and just put it smack dab in the middle because there are some good things about it. And I know I have kind of a bias on this one. So it is what it is. Just saying. But anyway, thanks for checking this out. Go ahead and put comments down here and you can go ahead and do spoilers in the comments. That's fine. Go ahead and we'll talk more about this film. Do me a quick favor though, hit that subscribe button if you like this review or any review you've seen or any video you've seen on my channel, really. That is your way to repay me because I don't make money doing this. I'm just trying to build a nerdy horror community of people I can talk to when I post these videos and just be nerdy about horror. That, that's the fun of it. But hit that subscribe button uh, and also hit the notification bell because then you'll know when I'm putting new videos up. But yeah, regardless, I appreciate you taking your time to check this out. And until next time, keep it brutal.